welcome to the Gallery of the Oaks. My name is Dennis Dobbs, and it's my pleasure to take you on this gallery walk and talk with a few of our Wildwood artists who are currently exhibiting their works here at the gallery in our clubhouse. Join me on this visit that showcases the beautiful paintings and photographs by some of the 60 members of our community's visual arts club. Photographer Ron Richard. Ron, what feeds or inspires your creative passions? Well, Dennis, first of all, thanks. Nice to be here. I uh, I spent most of my adult life just really observing the world around me, uh, whether it's nature, whether it's uh, cityscape, landscape, uh, architecture. I just love shapes and textures and ambiance and. and uh, it slows me down to, to, to take my camera with me. I, I have to slow down, <laughs> and it's really important. I, I was a school teacher, as you know, <clears throat> uh, for the last 10 years of my teaching. I lived about a mile and a half from school. When I would drive to school, I would see a few things. When I would ride my bike, <laughs> I'd see way lots more stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I would walk, a whole mile and a half opened up to me. My camera forces me to do the same thing. Slow down, I'm uh -huh. Such a beautiful photograph, Ron, and the lighting. Do you have to have the same notions of composition? Or what goes into your thinking before a photo show? Well, I, I'm glad you asked me that, because unlike some folk photographers, I plan my work ahead of time, at least generally speaking. Uh, I don't take my camera very often with me, um, but I will check the calendar, I will check the weather forecast, I'll do a lot of checking before I, before I decide to take a photo. This particular day, I knew the sun was going to be, it was going to be high sunlight, a problem for photographers, but I knew that there were going to be trees, and I knew there were just enough clouds to maybe create some interesting light if I caught the right moments. So, I wandered through this forest, this is a redwood forest in Santa Cruz. I wandered through the forest thinking that I might see something uh, interesting if I, if I took a peek. Um, and I, I'll just go on for just a second. I, I Landscape photographers generally try to take a wide view of a scene, and I have done pretty much the opposite of that in my in my career of photographer, um, I use a lens, uh, predominantly a lens that will zoom in on something. You know, artists are encouraged to think outside the box. I try to think inside the frame. So if here is a wide image, uh, maybe flowers and mountains and clouds, uh, I'll try to look inside that frame for something to focus you know, a little more carefully. That's my challenge as a photographer. And this happened to catch my eye because I could see a vast array in front of me, but what I saw was that little alcove right there. Yeah. And I was on the lookout for it, huh. and I happened to catch it at a good time. It makes your eye just want to walk into the photograph. Uh, Tell me, uh, I don't know if it happens with photographers, but do you ever have a, a mental block? Of <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I have lots of metal blocks. I don't take my camera everywhere, as I mentioned before. Um, and so when I do take it, I feel I feel compelled to take a photograph. I feel compelled to get something done, and that puts pressure on me. Um, when I did teach school, when I did teach school, uh, I taught writing to middle school kids, and so we would often. I know writing is difficult for kids, just like photography and, and any artistic endeavor is difficult for anybody. So. What I often have the kids do when I would join in them in school is we would write for 10 minutes and I would just force the kids to move their pencil. Move the pencil. Then you have to the same word 10 times. Don't stop your pencil for 10 minutes. And it was really interesting because at the end of that time, some of the kids could hardly wait to quit. And other kids would just use that as a springboard to take off. Well, I'm the same way with my photography. That first shutter glitch is tough for me yeah. because it's like, oh, this isn't good enough, this isn't good enough. But once I start, 
I just can't stop, and I'm, I'm lost for hours. What's your most important tool as a photographer? Uh, well, the camera is important, but but at home, and actually when I'm when I'm photographing, a tripod is exceedingly important. I don't handhold. Mm -hmm. I set everything up. I slow down. I put my camera on a tripod, and I take a lot of care. I, I'll maybe come home with ten images instead of a thousand in, in a day's shooting. But once I get home, a printer is my probably my most oh, useful. Really? Yeah, because I can do it. I can do it all myself. Back in the day when I shot slide film, I had to uh, trust trust my uh, resources to somebody to an outside source, and I waited patiently for two weeks, and it would come back, and I open the envelope, and it'd be. <laughs> um, but now I can now I can do my own work. I can print, map, frame, do everything at home, oh, and it's great. It's open up. How did you get started, Ron? Uh, my dad, a member of the art club for years, uh, did every kind of art imaginable, and he did it all very, very well. Uh, I was intimidated. Uh, I had an impulse. I wanted to record the world I saw, but I didn't know how to do it without uh, trying to follow in his footsteps. And I just, his footsteps were way too big. Um, I picked up a camera, and that got me on my way. Well, Ron, thank you so much, and congratulations, it's beautiful book. Thank, thank you. you, nice talking to you. All right. We're joined with abstract artist Natalia Korich, a longtime member of Wild Woods Art Club. Natalia, how did you uh, start making art? Well, many years ago, about 10, I was goldsmith at the fine art of fine jewelry, and they taught me going back. So my husband had just said to his daughter, I know you want to learn to paint, but I'm going to show you how to do the song, how it forms, how it shapes, how lights and darks, and those kind of things are important to, to uh, art. So I said, oh, I want to do that too. So okay. I got a brush in my hand and we started making shapes and talking about lights and darks and forms. Mm -hmm. And I started with watercolor and I decided I like doing this better than jewelry when everybody's broken and doesn't want to buy any jewelry. So that's when I started doing um, watercolor art. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. And how is this gratifying or what do you get out of doing that? I like to lose myself. I I get in a space that I can't get any other way. Mm -hmm. I also like to create something that's inside, but I don't even know it's inside till it comes, and I go, "You did that? How did you do that?" <laughs> it's, 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 it's just comes out when I don't expect it to. How has your art uh, changed over time, or has it? The, well, 10 years ago, I joined a group that meet at Buttermaker's Cottage. Some of them are art members, art club members, and we go every Thursday. I went to many workshops, and they were all in watercolor. And three years ago, I went to Sayulita, Mexico, with some artists, and they taught mixed media. Mixed media is where you use multiple different kinds of art. So, watercolor, and acrylic, and papers, and oil pastels, and all kinds of different things. And I decided I really liked, I liked watercolor, but I also liked to paint with papers. And so I started taking many of my watercolor paintings and started putting different things on them so I could enhance the design where the lights and darks were. And I could just go up and say, oh, I think it would be better if I had something of that color there. So then I would just paint it color and I'd go, well, with mixed media, I can just hold the paper up there or tape it up there and find ah, out if it works. Yes. Now I know you have another piece here on exhibit in the gallery. I wonder if we can I'd like to show you. Natalia, tell us about this piece. This is an exciting new kind of art that I'm exploring. I am taking Chinese or Japanese rice paper and I'm painting watercolor on it. When I get done, I'm attaching the paper to a canvas. And then I'm enhancing it by putting uh, acrylic, pieces of papers, pieces of oil pastel, 
And I think I like it because when I got done with this piece, it was all green. And I mm. thought, oh, wow. you know, I want some blue in there. Well, with watercolor, you're dead. Mm. So I started putting in the blue with the acrylic. And it's opened up new things for me. And currently, most of my work is totally abstract. These two pieces, you can see things in them. But I am much more attracted now to pieces that are just forms and shapes, lights and darks, textures, and all the things of design. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you. Meet Sherry Merrifield in front of her Impressionist Art acrylic painting. I'm aware that you've been an artist most all of your life, Sherry. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, this piece of art? This one started out to be abstract. I decided I wanted to delve into abstract. It's the only thing I haven't done, watercolors, acrylics, and I've been through the whole gamut except for abstract. So there I started, as you can see in my background, very kind of abstract back there. And then I start seeing things and I go back to Impressionism. <laughs> so apparently it might be what I do. And I seem to find flowers and everything. And so although I started with an abstract background, it became this as I was going along. Uh, I, this is the first time I've done, I'm starting to work with little uh, mixed media items being put in here. And this was my first try uh, with the dripping. Ah, this copper wire. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, that's just this built up over a period of about two months. And, uh, and what art medium do you enjoy to work with? I'm really oh. enjoying acrylics now. I'm normally an oil painter. Uh, I started also with watercolors, but now, uh, and then I've done years and years and years of oils. And I've just recently come into the, uh, not only the abstracts, but the acrylics and the mixed media, and uh, it's just a, a normal progression. And that's where I am now and enjoying it. What inspires or feeds your creative passion, Sherry? Mostly it's the media of nature. It's, uh, I seem to be very, very interested in color and to flowers and uh, anything that's just this pretty. I like pretty things, and it's mostly I look for the colors I want to use. I kind of choose a palette first. How do you know when your work is finished? It seems like if it stays in my house that it never gets finished. Huh? <laughs> uh, I have worked on paintings 15, 20 years old going, I found this in the closet, uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, find that I never stop painting them. I have to hide them from myself. Mm. <laughs> And how has your art developed over time? Uh, I was very realistic, starting realistic, because that's all I knew that many years ago. And, uh, and I never really got the hang of it all. It, was, it, it just didn't work for me. So I started, the impressionism made me feel good that I could make an impression of a flower, if not an impression of a vase, or whatever it is I'm doing and not be quite so serious about it. And I find that I work better in a less serious atmosphere. Well, you're a new member to our art club and yes. wonderful addition. Thank you so much Thank for sharing. Thank you so much. All right. gallery walk and talk. We hope you will visit the works of local artists on exhibit both here at the Gallery of the Oaks and in the Wildwood Community Center. Check out eBiz for more information about the activities of the Art Club. Perhaps you would like to join the Art Club or the TV Club that has produced this telecast. Both clubs welcome new members. We wish you all an enjoyable life of creativity. Thank you.